In this video, it is the Red Cat Ascent getting a full size servo winch, a little fair lead in the front, all trying to use it off the factory controller. Let's get started by getting the body off and looking at how we're going to mount this super nice Reefs uh, servo winch. With the servo itself, this is the Reefs 422 HD V2. This is everything you need, including a spool. And here is some wire, hook, and materials. And of course, you're going to want a sticker. First thing we're going to do is look at kind of how we think this thing is going to mount in here. So we're going to take off four screws here to make room for the servo to sit right down on there. Beautiful. Sits right in there like it was meant to be there. We'll probably put it to where the splines are forward here. It looks like if we put it in the rear, we might have an interference with the pan hard rod as it comes across. We're going to have an issue with it binding on the steering linkage. So we might need to play with this a little bit. Before we go putting on the spool or the line or anything along those lines, I want to go ahead and plug this in. And we're going to be using channel 4 because that's the three position switch on the controller. So I want to go ahead and plug it into channel 4 on the receiver. Ooh, look at that! Spins one direction, spins the other direction. That is awesome! So, so super easy. Alright, so then the spool can go on there. To make installation a little bit easier, I'm going to be removing this top brace. Well, now we have a little bit of a problem. So, if you put it to where the spool is forward, hope you can see this on the camera, the uh, the steering linkage is actually through the spool there on that side. So that is not very good. If we flip it around to where the spool is in the rear, then the spool completely clobbers the panhard rod. And the panhard is in the way right there. So we need to do something different here in order to create some more room. And I think what I can do is actually move the panhard rod to the other side of the mounting holes. So move it back on this side, move it back on this side, and it'll move it back and out of the way enough for that spool. Now the next piece, in order to move this panhard rod, uh, we need to get that screw out. Well, that screw is currently facing the shock. Uh, which is going to make it really hard to get it out. Kind of wish they had put that screw in from the other side. That would have been dramatically easier. Uh, good news is the pan hard mount is just two screws here. It looks like I can take those two screws out, then get the screw, move all that over on that side. Uh, the other side is dramatically easier there with the red aluminum piece. I'm going to be able to just take a screw off and move it to the other side. Put the pan hard rod on the other side and then put this screw back in. Screw it in right here on this side. Now that might make that pan hard a little bit uh, weaker because we're basically going to only be using the one side here now instead of both sides. Now I could probably get a longer screw that would go through both and I could even put a nut on the other side in order to get the full strength here. Or I may end up making, you know, getting an aluminum mount to put here in its place as well. And on this other side, the tool can actually come in from the front here. And pop that out. And I can probably do just the same thing where I can just run that screw in back here from the other side. Now, I don't normally use ball tip tools, but this one is a definitely a good opportunity to use one because of that angle that it's on in there. Now, you just got to be careful with the ball tip. You can't put nearly as much force through it. So once you get it tight down there, you might need to take a uh, standard angle wrench or something and try to get that tight if you don't want to take that pan hard mount all the way off. Just because I hate losing a part out on the trail, I did go ahead and put a nylock nut on the back side of this. And now that pan hard rod does move just freely. I'll be honest, there is only like a millimeter of clearance between it and the pinion and spur gear, but it does fit. Um, it fits, it works just like it did before. Uh, dimensions are all still basically the same, so that is good news. And it should now provide us enough room to get that servo winch in there. 
talked to the folks at Red Cat about this interference that I was having because I assumed that this would actually be pretty straightforward of a bolt in. And what they told me, well, I was using the wrong servo, really. Um, <laughs> the Reefs RC and others actually do make an internal spool servo where instead of the spool sitting on the outside of the servo like this one does, the spool's actually on the inside. They said that's actually the best practice is you can bolt this in. That internal spool would be on the front here and it would feed in right underneath this body mount straight out of here. Works like a champ. Mm, but I bought this one already. And so what I then did is instead of using this bigger spool that the standard Reefs servo comes with, I got their low profile spool kit. So that's going to save me a good amount of distance right there. And then the other thing that the Red Cat engineer suggested is that if I still needed more space, I could actually space the whole servo up if I really, really needed to. So we're going to try it with this low profile servo kit. We're going to see just how much room that actually does save us versus the standard spool and see. And I bet that's going to get us to where even maybe maybe we have to space it just a little bit. But otherwise, I think this is going to work. And now at this point we have some spares because this kit also does come with some wire and the hook on the end. So now we've got two of all those. And here's the difference in height between these spools. That is a big difference. And now with it installed there as it comes down, it still hits. I can actually measure that what we're going to need here is still about a four or five millimeter spacer. So we're still going to need to space this servo up just a little bit in order to make sure we have enough clearance. In order to give myself that little extra space up on the servo that I need, I'm going to use these little parts. Turns out I buy a lot of servos to test out on the channel, and I never use these little parts. But I don't throw them away. I guess I might be a little bit of a pack rat or something. I keep all these things. You get the little round rubber ones. You get the, the little metal standoffs here. You get the square pieces you get these tie bars that go between the two of them i literally just never use these things but i stick them in a bin turns out they're all about that five millimeters thick or so which means they should do the job so i'm going to use some combination of these to space that servo up just enough and before i mount it in i'm going to go ahead and start the screw here and i'm going to get the wire started in the spool I'm going to use a little awl and I'm going to push it around and then I'm going to smash it down with that screw to make sure that it holds that end in. Check that out. Servo's now mounted nice and solid. We have the servo wire running back here so we can plug it into the receiver. And then up here we have the lead coming through. And it looks like we are just about ready to go ahead and feed this through. That comes through like a champ. Also buy myself this SSD. This is just a, a, a fairly grommet here. So let's check this thing out. I really only got this just because I thought it would look cool, if I'm honest. I, I don't I don't believe that it really is necessary with the design that Red Cat gave us here on the front bumper. I thought it would look cool. <laughs> and they have a couple mounting screws here. This SSD part comes with the screws itself. Now for me, the hardware that comes with the SSD uh, lead there is not long enough to go through uh, the it itself, the guide itself, and the bumper. And so I'm going to have to revert to some different hardware. So based on what I have laying around, it's going to end up being slightly bigger diameter. Which means I'm going to need to drill out both the the guide and the bumper and put a nut on the back side to hold it firmly. For the lead itself here, you feed the wire in through one part of this little ferrule, around, back through it. Uh, the bolt and nut come through this way. Now I'm going to Loctite it. I may actually find another nut and double nut it as well. And then we're going to crimp this. Uh, I'm basically going to take like some wire crimpers and just crimp down in there. And check it out. Now just like this, plugged in, channel 3, one way and it extends out. The other way it comes back in. Now in the Red Cat live stream, Shane, the head engineer, and Oscar, the the mouth of Red Cat, <laughs> in the face of it a lot of times, they gave some really good information around how you could actually change the endpoints of Channel 4, and that would actually change the speed also. So you could change both the in and out speed as you set the endpoints, both in and out. I'm going to let them explain that to you. So I will leave a link to that video down in the video description. So now let's give it a test. I uh, might want to set my outspeed a little bit faster, huh? 
in a competition and I'm all excited. Alright, so we're going to wrap it around here and we're going to watch it pull the truck up. There you go. Well, that's not what I expected. I assumed that just this, you know, little furl that I had here came loose. It didn't. This Reefs RC uh, winch line just snapped. It found a weak spot and it snapped. Well, on that bombshell, I guess I need to get to uh, putting a new lead on here. Fortunately, I have a whole spare one, but I'm gonna go ahead and just use this. If you're curious about anything else that I've done with the Red Cat Ascent, there'll be a playlist popping up over here to your right. I hope to see you in one of those videos. Thank you and goodbye.